what I thought I could do is talk to you a little bit about some of the experiences and learnings from building a hardware product in a long cycle, uh, fairly complex and challenging industry such as solar. Uh, but uh, to set things off, uh, here is a little bit about what we do. Uh, we have a technology called Solar Skin, which is a graphic layer that's designed to visually transform the appearance of solar panels. So think of it like a screen protector for solar panels, except something that can come in any color or pattern. And the innovation lies in being able to do this while still achieving a high amount of light transmission to the underlying solar module, so typically upwards of uh, 90%. Uh, so what this means is that if you are a homeowner, you no longer have to sacrifice your curb appeal while going solar. Uh, so as a good example, this is one of our first installations we did in Massachusetts. As you can see, the skin makes the panels blend in with the surrounding roof color. And you could do this no matter what style, color, or pattern of roof it is. And if you're a business owner, you can transform the panels into a branding or advertising medium. Uh, so this is a project we completed recently for a premium rye whiskey brand up in Vermont called Whistlepig. And if there are any Breaking Bad fans here, uh, Whistlepig is one of the whiskey spirits that's often featured on the series. Uh, thought I'd share with you a little clip about this uh, installation as well as the type of possibilities that it opens up. Uh, so have a look. Hopefully that gave you a bit of glimpse into the type of applications that we can do. Thank you. Uh, and, and the reason we do all this harkens back to our mission, which is this belief that if you made solar so beautiful that it captures the world's imagination, you're that much more likely to make people fall in love with it and adopt it. All right, so that's the spiel on the product and the business. But like I said, the reason I'm here today is to share with you some of the experiences and learnings uh, from six years of building this business. And as I was making notes, thinking back to the turning points in our company's history, one theme that came recurring to me over and over again, which is a theme that I have modeled today's talk on, is encapsulated in this proverb, necessity is the mother of invention. The idea that constraints and sometimes being boxed into a tight corner can often lead to unexpected breakthroughs that end up having big ramifications on your business and product. And I'd like to do that by illustrating examples from three uh, uh, important inflection points in our company's history, from the early days of developing the product to figuring out the go-to-market strategy and finally nailing in on the value proposition and business model. So let's start with the product. Back in 2014, when we first came up with the concept for solar skin, we thought that we were going to be in the business of making modules. It just seemed to make logical sense. Here is a module that comes in any color or pattern. So we tried to go out there and raise money for it. Very quickly, we found out that that's very tough to do for a couple of reasons. Firstly, module manufacturing is an extremely capital-intensive business. It takes tens of millions of dollars just in startup capital, and down the line, you're looking at hundreds of millions more to scale it up. And if that weren't hard enough, it was compounded by the fact that a lot of investors had burnt their fingers investing in module manufacturing, uh, companies that didn't quite pan out. So we heard a lot of no's, and, and so we, we went back to the drawing board, and we were thinking, does it mean we should just abandon, pack up, and try something else? But we really didn't want to do that. We wanted to continue with the mission. Uh, so we said, what if we thought about it a little bit differently? What if, instead of going for what we truly want and not getting it, what if we could do what do the best with what with what we did have once we changed our mindset we realized that the answer lay in disaggregating the product and focusing on just the solar skin and making it in a way that it could be applied to any panel 
that was a little bit easier to raise funds for. But as it turned out, fundraising wasn't even the biggest benefit that we got out of this. In fact, the biggest benefit was that now solar skin became universally compatible and it could be applied to any panel technology or brand out there. And that ended up having a breakthrough moment for us in 2017, a few months after Tesla announced the launch of a product called the Tesla Roof, which uh, maybe you might have heard of it. It's a really cool product that basically combines uh, the roof and panel into one. So it created a lot of buzz in the market, and we ended up getting a lot of customers who came to us, one of whom said, hey, I like this concept of an integrated solar roof, but I really like it to come in colors, and I love that you guys can do any color or pattern. Can you do a product like this? Uh, so we went out in the marketplace, and we found out that there are actually a type of panel called solar shingles, which are low-profile panels that are meant to blend in with the roof profile. So unlike a traditional panel, they don't sit off of the, uh, the roof. And, and we were able to combine solar skin with that, and we delivered the product for the customer. So, and, and aside from making the customer happy, it ended up opening up the new home-built market for us, a market that we hadn't previously thought of, and a market that's getting a lot of attention in California in particular because of a mandate that requires all new homes in that state to have solar from day one. So a lot of home builders who care about aesthetics, a market, again, that we had never thought of, are now working with us. And we wouldn't have been able to do this if we had been in the business of making a module as we had originally set out to do. But that wasn't the only time when constraints helped us. Further down the line, when we were uh, thinking about the best way to take this to market, uh, it again came in handy. So the solar value chain is like this. You have module manufacturers upstream who sell to installers, who then sell to end customers. And conventional logic would suggest that if you're a components maker like us, we should be selling upstream to the module manufacturers or the installers. And we try to do that. But a big hurdle we kept running into, and this is something that other uh, startups might also be able to relate to, is every single one of these guys wanted exclusivity. Which, you know, from their perspective is great, but if you're an early stage startup and you care about going as far and wide as possible, that's a pretty tough thing. So again, we went back to the drawing board and we said, well, there is one piece on this slide that we haven't actually thought about. What if we honed in on them? What if we honed in on the end customer? And so we started doing a lot of marketing directly to the end customer, something, again, as a components maker, we didn't really think we would be doing. But it ended up getting so much interest on a daily basis. We'd have homeowners and businesses reach out to us. And one of them proved to be the next big, big breakthrough for us in opening up the next big market segment. So I'd like to introduce you to Joey Miles, a homeowner in Indiana, who lives in a homeowners association, or HOA. And for those, who, those of you who may not be aware, HOAs are communities where if you live, you have to abide by certain common uh, rules and requirements, including what you can and can't do to the exterior of your home. Turned out that Joey was trying to get approval for solar on a street-facing roof, and for two years, his HOA kept rejecting him. So he reached out to us. Long story short, we were able to help solve the problem, get solar approved with the inclusion of solar skin. So here is a smiling Joey after the installation was completed. But it wasn't just Joey that turned out to be the market that, that we opened up here. Turns out that Joey is one of 25 million homeowners around the country who are part of HOAs where the biggest barrier to solar adoption is aesthetics. To put that in perspective, the total number of homes that have gone solar to date in the country is fewer than 2 million. And again, this is a market segment we would never have thought about had we been selling to manufacturers and installers because for them, the HOA market is so tough that they don't even bother selling into it for the most part. So a second time that being boxed in and put in a situation that initially seemed difficult ended up being a big game changer for us. And now we have HOA approvals in multiple states around the country. And now for the third and final example, the one that I'm most excited about, because the constraint that we face here isn't unique to us. It's in fact common to the entire industry. Today, the biggest pain point in the solar industry is customer acquisition. The most expensive piece in solar is not the technology, but the cost of acquiring a customer. And there's a good reason why. In the United States, no one's waking up in the morning feeling the pinch for electricity. 
you flick on that light switch, you're pretty much guaranteed that the bulb is gonna turn on. Turn on. Now, against this status quo, what the industry tells customers is, hey, look, here is a cleaner, and by the way, in the long term, cheaper way for you to turn on that light bulb, which is a great argument if you're an early adopter of solar, but for the mainstream market, that isn't sufficient to help overcome that initial inertia. And so we said, all right, what could we do differently about the value proposition? And that's when we started focusing on the commercial side of the business, and we toyed around and introduced this idea of solar as an advertising medium. To illustrate this, uh, here, is, here is a sort of compare and contrast. On the left is what is known as a solar carport, basically parking lots where you have solar installations that also serve as electricity generation while also providing shade for uh, the cars underneath. And on the right is that same carport visualized with advertisement with the help of solar skin. And here is how the economic shakes out. Today on the left, you get about $8,000 in electricity savings from the solar panels. But with solar skin and with the power of advertising, the total value that you get out of it is nearly four times that, $32,000. And that's based on the ad rates that companies are already paying for outdoor billboards around the country. To sort of drive that home, we went and spoke to a number of different brands and we learned that in the last three years, the big companies in the US spent a total of $7 billion on solar investments. During that same time frame, those same companies spent more than three times that amount, $23 billion on outdoor advertising, a subset of the $200 billion total advertising pool. So when we went and told them, hey look, don't worry about solar and the clean energy and all of that. You're spending money on outdoor advertising. What if you could also achieve your sustainability goals at the same time. And that's something that stuck very, very, that resonated a lot with a lot of the brands. And so today we are taking on big projects such as uh, large solar carports near airports, uh, hotels, theme parks, resorts, uh, outdoor street furniture, sports stadiums and the like. Again, segments that we would never have thought about had, had we not been forced to think about different ways to espouse the value proposition. So with that, I'd like to bring everything together with another quote, uh, something I heard from someone I trust a lot and turn to for advice a lot. And during a particularly difficult moment in the company's journey, uh, she told me, look, crisis is opportunity. And that is so true. Every time we went through a moment of crisis, just by reframing how we could look at it, just by thinking about what we could do with the best of what we had, we ended up finding uh, new insights that we wouldn't have come up with otherwise. And I guess being in the solar field and being passionate about climate change, I'd be remiss if I didn't uh, further that analogy into the climate crisis. Uh, we're going through a perilous moment in the planet's uh, life cycle. And as much as it is a crisis, it's also an opportunity for us to take action, to come up with innovative ways uh, to, to change human behavior. Uh, so with that said, I'd like to thank you all again for having me and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Senza, that was fantastic. I'll bring you back the mic, run it back. A daily exercise. Thank you, thank you. Uh, first of all, um, it was a very interesting presentation on your flexibility in terms of identifying opportunities and just uh, not being stuck with what otherwise uh, most people would have been. So that was very interesting. I'm curious, I, I know more about um, large-scale solar installations where cost of capital and uh, efficiency is the driving um, uh, or sorry, are the driving parameters and a 10% reduction in efficiency would probably not get a project finance. Um, I'm assuming based on your success that it's different in uh, the residential and, and small commercial space. Could you elaborate more that even though you reduce efficiency by 10%, um, you're still get, getting all this traction? And the second one is uh, the part of the future of solar, the second part is part of the future of solar panels for rooftops, uh, the, uh, thin film. And um, does your product also work with those um, as they become more ubiquitous? Thank you. Thank you. To, to answer the second part of the question first, uh, yes. Uh, again, because we focused on just the skin, uh, we developed it in a way that it could be added to any technology out there, whether it's crystalline, thin film, bifacial panels, uh, uh, SIGs, uh, what have you. Uh, so, 
So yeah, that's a good news from our perspective. Uh, going back to that first question, and, and you know, that's an important one, and we get asked that a lot. Um, you know, how do people resonate with this reduction in efficiency? And, and what we found out is that if you're talking to early adopters of solar, uh, for them just the fact that they can go green is the biggest reason to go solar. So those are not our target market. But you go beyond that 2% early adopters for the, uh, the, the mainstream market, that's where we have found that solar as it is today isn't resonating enough. Part of it is aesthetics. A lot of homeowners who either by choice or uh, you know, by requirement, like in an HOA, um, you know, can't go solar because of aesthetics. But we also found out that even in the commercial sector, when you layer in the advertisement value, that far outweighs the reduction in efficiency. In fact, those figures that I showed that the compare and contrast, that assumes the reduction in efficiency and the reduced electricity revenue, but the advertising revenue that you get, no amount of technology efficiency improvements over the uh, coming five, 10 years can rival that. So that's what's really exciting. Again, it's a way of spelling out different values to different customer segments. That's really the key. Oh, yep. Hey, so two, two questions. Uh, one, as, as an advertising platform, it seems like most of these panels point up towards the sun, which would make it hard for people to see the content. Is this primarily focused on like airplanes and stuff, or are you trying to angle it down more, or how does that work? And my other question is, um, are there any restrictions to colors? Like, can you have an all white solar panel or all black? Yes. Thanks. Yes, again, the second part is easier. Uh, yes, we can do literally any color, and uh, not just any color, any image, any pattern. And, um, and yes, the, for the first part of the question, the key really is visibility, like you said. So if it's uh, near an airport, uh, then pretty much anything that's you know, done today, any type of solar installation is, you know, is desirable property for advertising. But there are also other instances, so for example, uh, street furniture, uh, where you have uh, you know, panels on bus shelters and um, you know, other uh, you know, street furniture installations, you could have the panels pointed uh, you know, towards the audience and still get a good amount of energy. Uh, solar billboards is another one on vertical facades. Uh, we're doing installations in downtown buildings that, it go, that goes on the vertical facades of the buildings. And again, that's highly visible. Uh, you know, on the sides of highways, uh, if you're on the interstate and you look down at a warehouse rooftop that may be visible, that's another uh, you know, potential uh, location. So yeah, there, you know, it's not, like you said, it's not for every use case, but there are plenty of use cases where it is very applicable. So we got one back here. We do two more. Sorry, sneak through. Just a simple question. What's your network effect? I'm sorry, what was it? What's your network effect? The network effect? Yes. Do you have a network yeah, effect? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, we actually didn't think too much about it in the beginning, but it turns out we do have a pretty unexpected network effect. So I'll give you an example. We recently uh, uh, helped uh, a homeowner in a historic district in uh, D.C., uh, get approval from the historic review board for solar and it got published on the Washington Post yesterday and since then we have had folks from the historic districts in Delaware, in Maryland, uh, in uh, Massachusetts, in New Hampshire all reach out to us in just the last 24 hours you know by virtue of reading about it but by also by virtue of those review board members you know talking about it so a couple of them heard about it from the folks who approved it in that review board. So we're finding that instances like that HOAs and historic districts, once we prove that it can open it up, uh, we get a lot more uh, inquiries that come out of it. One more. Um, technical question. Um, are you looking into orthotropic reflectance? Um, so that way it's transparent to the sky, but um, like a hologram, or um, but you see the image um, at an angle? Yeah, our technology uh, doesn't, isn't based on that, and, and um, you know, we looked at it too. Uh, it turns out that we can actually achieve higher efficiencies with our approach than that approach, where, uh, you know, what the gentleman is referring to is the solar panels would, would display an image when you're looking at it from street level, but if you're, you know, if you're pointing, uh, if you're from up above, if you're looking at it from the sky above, uh, you would just see the panels. In fact, I think that's the same technology that Tesla, uh, uh, you know, talked about. Uh, but we are able to achieve higher efficiencies with our approach than, than with that. Uh, so yeah, we, you know, 
it's, it works out nicely. The aesthetic is visible from all angles while still having the efficiencies we want. Santo, thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Thank you very much.